Hi RHS administrators. I have done this video like three times and I'm not sure that I'm getting it. It'll ever be what I like so I'm just gonna try one more time to make this really short and sweet. Um, the purpose of this is to give you a chance to uh, preview the information you need to be part of the lab cycles especially if you can't come to meet on Wednesday at Jamie Baxter's room at 1025. So if you are gonna come you can click this um, video off and um, save me some of the uh, embarrassment of doing this and come see us at uh, uh, Jamie Baxter's room uh, at 1025 and we'll preview how we're going to observe, what we're going to observe, and the purpose of what we're doing that. So if you can't make it at 1025 you can continue um, and I will share with you what we have. First of all, um, the purpose of our uh, observations is to look into the co-inquiry question that staff um, developed. Um, it is, or it states, what would happen if all students had structured writing and speaking activities, interactive um, and structured writing and speaking opportunities to process information. So that's the big overarching question that we're designing our lessons around and wondering about and debriefing on as we do that. You are so important in this process now. Um, you are coming in to affirm us as staff as we're doing this work together, to encourage us and celebrate that, to be lead learners. And so we want to invite you into that question as well to see what you're seeing and wondering about student work, about their writing and their speaking. Um, about the interactive part, that's really important, um, both in the standards that we'll look at, interaction, and we know that interaction between students um, develops the type of thinking and output we need for Common Core um, achievement. So your, like I said, I just thank you for doing this and your involvement is going to be absolutely essential to us learning as a whole system, hopefully, and at least as our lab cycle group. Um, so again, I said the purpose is one, to celebrate teachers and be part of this um, exciting work that we're doing. It's really fun to be in there to talk together and just to have, um, I've always wanted just a really professional setting where we ask questions together, we respect each other's voice, we're wondering out loud, and um, that's really what's happening. So we want to invite you to be part of that with us. Um, it's kind of sharing the vibe all around the building and in the classrooms, talking in the hallway about the questions. Um, but to do that, we're going to also investigate and um, the 10 ELD standards that have been approved by ODE. So some of you already know these and they're very familiar to you. And for some of you, it'll be the first time you've seen these. Um, but these 10 standards, if I can, and I struggle trying to get this in the right view for you, um, I'll attach this to this email, are um, the 10 standards for English language proficiency. Our new report card for English language learners is based on these. And also, a really neat thing is these are derived from our ELA, our um, Next Gen, all the Common Core uh, our math um, practices, they are articulated back from those outcomes. So you might put it in the reverse and say they end up in our Common Core standards. So they're all tied together, putting, bringing the opportunity for a lot of cohesive instruction. We take those 10 standards and are able to, Audi has done a great job, I think, of breaking them down by levels of student talk or evidence of uh, student proficiency. So if um, by the end of, it says by the end of the um, uh, level a student can do this and this particular standard number two which is one we're focusing on can participate in 11th graders that standard two can participate in grade appropriate oral exchanges of written uh, let me start over participate in grade appropriate oral and written exchanges of information ideas and analysis respond to peer audience or reader comments and questions um, for instance a level two evidence of that would be simply to respond to simple questions and uh, WH questions like who, what, when, where, why. So present information and ideas. So for instance, if you're in a classroom and you hear a student say the answer is 25, to me, that's evidence of level two. Now the student may not be a level two, they may be actually post-monitored, which means they've been out of ELD for at least three years. Um, but the evidence or the language they're using in the class, their output of learning, was you will note or say it 
ranked as a level two. The evidence was there. These documents go all the way to the level five. And so just for um, if you saw a group of students negotiating over a big idea, sort of persuading each other to understand what they said and kind of coming to agreement, that would be uh, evidence of number five, participate in extended conversations, discussions, and written exchanges on a range of substantive topics, texts, and issues then you would be able to say, well, because those students were together in a group and they were writing their thoughts down and they were changing their thoughts as they were discussing back and forth and they were coming to agreement, well, all those students, and you're able to see those students participate in that, that would be evidence of a level five. So where do you record all this? Um, I created a little tool for us um, to record our evidence. In this box here, you would write the student's name and their current level, like whether they're post-monitored, exited, or active, and that'll be provided for you as you, um, you'll have a document to look at to find that information. Here, you just write what you see, write down. And then you will wonder or guess at that level that I just spoke of. Like you said, well, that seems to be evidence of number two based on this. Now remember, we're only in there for about 10 minutes. So focusing on one student and seeing what they're reading and writing, or it's not reading, could be reading, um, but writing or speaking, recording that and coming up with an idea is about as complex as this is gonna get. The other part is that I want are complex or just as much as you can do. This part is a co-inquiry question. And then you might state a wonder or a question. If you have time, we can record quickly what the task is. You can see if the teacher's using any hands-on or visual displays that help with that language. And also you could note if there was any groupings, like small pairs or rotating. Um, as you are in the classroom. So this will be the main document you're using to write and record evidence of. This will be one that you'll refer to try to note what level of output, either written or spoken, that the student is uh, giving, showing evidence of. All right, so that is um, the work within classrooms. I just come back to evidence base is what you know that you could prove you saw it or you heard it. So that's what we will write in that column. Anything else like a wondering or an assumption that we turn into a question, we'll go into that other column. Keeping our focus on students and evidence-based is what creates a safe environment for teachers to try new things. Um, to me, it really doesn't matter what the strategy is or what a teacher does if the output is uh, on grade level, um, complex language that is helping a student achieve the standards that we've set or go beyond the standards. Um, so we backtrack from student evidence into what we call teacher moves or actions, or we refine a teacher move to increase that student language. So we collect that student evidence in the lab cycles and take a look at it, and then talk about um, you know, our learnings, our wondering. So that's, you're modeling that same process for us. Um, we will, you also have a couple other documents um, in terms of schedule, just to help you know what's happening. Mari sent this document out, and it has, um, you, the teachers group by color codes, and I believe she assigned you to each one of these groups. So you're either blue, yellow, or green. What I did, so that we know, I know you guys are gonna, I know you guys are gonna get pulled out into different events or concerns. So let's say that you started with us in Jamie Baxter's room and you're in blue, you're with me in Jamie Baxter's room, and we moved to Amy's room at 11.05, but then you got pulled out and you're not sure where to go, and you look and it's 11. 38, you know that we are in Eric's room. So you can rejoin us there in Eric's room. Same type of schedule um, I've created for yellow and green. And then at the very end of uh, the day, um, again, we'll try to preview this. And hopefully if you're watching this, you don't have to watch it. If you can come to Jamie's room at 1025. And then we'll also debrief at 2 o'clock for just 20 minutes. And the goal of our debrief will be to sort of let you guys talk to each other real quick about the students you saw, level of evidence or a talk that you might have saw, and some questions that you have. From that, I'll help us quickly in 20 minutes kind of devise um, a learning statement that um, anchors us in uh, the celebrations that you saw teachers are doing, um, how students are doing, some sort of celebratory part of our statement, the urgency that we have to have students talk and to participate in uh, grade level and above exchanges so that we can um, Help them be successful. Um, inviting questioning, so to model your own questions and wondering in the statement will be wonderful. And 
just affirm your support for the lab cycle learning for the teachers for this continued work, putting yourself in the learning uh, as well. That will be very encouraging to us and so very needed um, leadership that we need to move forward and to know that the work that the teachers are doing, if there's systems, ideas that they come up with, having you involved in understanding what they're doing is really important. Many buildings come up with um, consistent type of learning structures that they might do either per grade level or all building wide. So a lot of the discussion that comes through the lab cycles that output what they want to do, what they want to learn with it, it's really important to have our leadership tuned into that so that um, we can take action on it. Um, plus, um, it's just a great group of people to be with, as you know. So I am humbled and very privileged to be doing this work with you um, to learn because I know all of you bring certain perspectives and I'm looking forward to hearing those um, as we move through the classrooms. Also, this is the first time, so please provide us your feedback on what was working, what isn't. Um, there's a lot of complex scheduling going into this and I thank Mari for taking the first um, dive at those schedules, so please give us our, your feedback on scheduling and if we need to adjust things. And again, I just thank you for trying. If you can make it to two cycles or two classroom observations, I really want you to do all because you're going to see just a variety of different um, language learners, a variety of different classrooms. You're going to see some of the most fabulous teachers we have and um, be part of a lot of fun. Pizza and coffee in the morning if you want um, on the um, lab cycle day. If you come in with us then too, we'd like you to join us for um, the at least the opening statement which starts at 8 on the 19th um, and then also if you could be part of the observation or debrief. Those are two really critical places and we can dial that schedule in for you later. Thank you. We'll see you.